One key warning sign for a cult is that they have a list of written rules for followers. Mm. Do you have a list of written rules that people must follow if they wish to come to your seminars? No, I don't. <laughs> and my feeling is there's only one rule, and that is, do you want to be loving or you don't, or you don't want to be loving? Mm -hmm. One of the two. And, and the rule is, if you want to engage in my seminars, you can come along for free as long as you want to be loving. <laughs> and if you don't want to be loving, then I don't want you there. Yeah. Um, and I'd rather that you don't come. Yeah. And that's the rule. <laughs> yeah. And it's one rule. And, and yes, it is my definition of loving, certainly. But I, I can reassure people that my definition of loving is a lot better than what I've observed everyone else's definition of loving happens to be at this point. Yeah. And so, yes, I'm trying to put into practice God's definition of loving. And so that means that if you desire to harm another person at a seminar or something, something that we do, and, or you desire to harm myself or Mary, you, at, at some of the events, you know, you wish to attack us or you wish to denigrate us or humiliate us or pull us down, then yes, you're going to be asked to leave, you mm -hmm. know, because that's my rule. My rule is don't do that to anybody. It's not loving to do that to anybody. No matter what you think of them, it's not loving to do that to anybody. Now, again, I observe many, many religious organisations and political organisations and other organisations have a long list of written rules. Yeah. And I don't feel they're very necessary. If, if the underlying rule in every organisation on the planet was love and the underlying rule in every interaction was love, then at the end of the day, you wouldn't need all these other rules. These other rules are needed because nobody knows how to love mm -hmm. or nobody wants to love. Mm -hmm. That's why the rules are needed. Now, under the definition of this question, all of those organisations that created all of these rules, which we don't have, yeah. um, would all be cults. And, uh, and yet they're not classified as such generally. So I find it interesting that we have no written rules whatsoever and yet we're classified as a cult. When a lot of these other organisations who are accusing us of being a cult have a long list of written rules mm. that they forcefully apply mm -hmm. to the point of expulsion yeah. of their particular organisation um, when you don't go along with the written rules and yet very few of the rules are actually based around what is loving or truthful. Mm. It's all based around what they believe is right or wrong and, and not necessarily what is loving or truthful. Yeah, mm. yeah. I suppose the other only rule that we have when attending a seminar is that people need to know that they're going to be filmed. Yes, but that's, that's not, it's really not really a rule. rule. It's, it's just a case in point. Like we've got, a, we've got three or four cameras around the place. Of course, at one point or another, you're going to get filmed. <laughs> and that's the way it is, you know. Yeah. Like if you don't want to be filmed, then don't come. Yeah. And you, you can still watch the film on a video. You know, you still see it on the internet for free. It's not like you're missing out on anything. But if you're worried about your face appearing on the camera, then my suggestions are that you're worried about living your life somehow. And my suggestion to that is, well, I, I would try to work through that fear if that's a fear that you have. And we, we have cameras around us all the time and, and we don't have any problem with, with that at all. We feel it, it's a great way of demonstrating the reality of the occurrence of an event. And it's also a great way to demonstrate our openness and our truthfulness with everyone that we meet. And so everyone knows who've come to a seminar knows that exactly what is on the videos that they see on the internet is exactly what happened at the seminar. Mm -hmm. And there's no thing, no, nothing removed from it, aside from maybe a few things like, you know, housekeeping things like where to go to the toilet and things like yeah. that. And there's nothing that's removed from the seminar at all. And, and that, that then should engender some kind of trust in the fact that we are open and honest and transparent in everything that we do. Yeah. Now, I find it very interesting that I am completely open and honest and transparent in everything that we do. We don't manufacture anything. And yet quite often when the media comes to ask us questions, they want us to manufacture fake situations in order for them to get their shot. Mm -hmm. Now that is something that we never do. Mm. So quite often the very thing we're accused of doing, which we don't do, is the very thing that the media or others who are the accusers of, of us do themselves. Yeah. And I find the hypocrisy of that quite obnoxious at some, sometimes yeah. um, because I see people, you know, accusing us of things which they themselves are hypocritically at that same moment attempting to do. Yeah. And, uh, and I feel that's pretty dishonest. So, but in terms of our own venues, as you know, 
no, there's no no problems with that at all. There's yeah. no written laws, written rules. There's no uh, out, thing that you've got to do aside from wanting to grow in love. Yeah. And uh, you're welcome to come along if you want to grow in love. If you don't want to grow in love, then don't come along. Uh, but don't think that there's some compound at our house where everybody's enforced to grow in love because <laughs> there's no compound and there's nobody there aside from Mary and I. <laughs> However, we are both very dedicated to growing in love, yeah. uh, which is our primary motivation for doing everything. Yeah. Mm.